Yes, 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 we've got the Insta360 GO 3. My favorite tiny camera has just gotten better. Insta360 GO 3 in the house, obviously a lot different than the GO 2. Not by much, but definitely different, especially with the action pod. We'll talk about that later, but here is what you need to know about the Insta360 GO 3. Just like the entire GO series, the Insta360 GO 3 is small and lightweight, weighing only 35 grams. The GO 3 shoots ultra-wide POV shots in 2.7K resolution, features the amazing flow state stabilization with 360 horizon lock. The camera is waterproof up to five meters or 16.4 feet. It also features voice control 2.0 and has some pretty neat AI powered editing tools in the app. The GO 3 can also record for a long time as well, but at 30 minute increments. Like when attached to the action pod, you can actually have a battery life of up to 170 minutes, which is crazy that I had to test it out myself and I was able to record over two and a half hours of video with the Insta360 GO 3. Speaking of battery life, the GO 3 camera itself shoots up to 45 minutes, which is 50% longer than the GO 2. It does overheat, just so you know, especially if you place this camera on the dashboard of your car and you're filming a, a hyperlapse. And whenever the camera overheats, it does stop recording. And so, just so you know. There are some new video modes in the GO 3, modes like pre-recording, loop recording, and time capture. I'll be honest, I, I didn't test out those modes because I was busy having fun just with the normal video mode and hyperlapse mode. Like if I'm being honest, like those are probably the two modes that you're most likely going to use with the Insta360 GO 3. That and reframe. Reframe is pretty cool. That's when the camera films at an ultra wide perspective. And when you're editing in the app, you can actually change the aspect ratio, whether it's 16 by nine or nine by 16 or one by one. It's a pretty cool feature. And so yeah, those are the three most used features that I use with the Insta360 GO 3. Oh, and uh, like I said before, the GO 3 camera itself is waterproof up to 16 feet, but the action pod is not waterproof. It is IPX4 water resistance against rain and splashes, but before you test this camera in the water, just submerge the GO 3, not the action pod. The audio on the GO 3 is much improved. You can record audio with the two built-in mics on the top and bottom of the lens. And I was actually very impressed with the audio coming from the GO 3. Like I was holding the camera vlog style and I could hear my voice very clearly, but when I was pointing the camera the opposite way, that way, I could still hear my voice very clearly because it captures audio from all directions. All right, I kind of want to do a side by side comparison between the Insta360 GO 3 and my Sony FX3. I know it's like comparing apples to oranges, whatever, I don't care, but I just wanted to see what the video quality is like. Also, the audio quality. So, this is the audio coming from the Insta360 GO 3. I honestly don't know how well the audio is going to sound. And now, this is the audio coming from my FX3 and ECM B10 digital mic. That sound that you're hearing in the background, hear that? Those are cicadas. They're loud, real loud. All right, so here's what you can expect in the box. Of course, you have the GO 3 itself with the action pod. You have the new and improved magnetic pendant with this really cool wedge, which you can place behind the pendant, which is great if you want to change the angle of your camera to get a better perspective. You also get the easy clip, which you can mount onto a backpack strap or a hat. And of course, you have the pivot stand, which you can easily mount the camera to and change the angles. There are some cool other mounting accessories too, like the hand grip, the sticky stand. I don't know what you call it. It's the one with the sticky bottom and this little bendy thing called the monkey tail. Check it out. It is now mounted to my bike. <laughs> awesome. Now the magnets on the GO 3 are a lot stronger than the GO 2. In fact, I have the pendant on right now behind my shirt. I'm gonna place the camera right there. There you go. And when I try to take it out, it's, uh, it does take a little bit more of an effort where the GO 2 was a lot easier to remove. And so yeah, stronger magnets, 
good in my books. Now there's a huge difference between the Insta360 GO 2 case and the case on the GO 3. With the GO 2, it's like this capsule design where the camera is safely stored. That's really cool. And you can see certain settings of the camera with the tiny screen over there. There's also these little feet that you can use to mount onto a flat surface. It's a pretty cool case. But the case on the GO 3 is much better because of the flip out screen. How cool is that? And with the flip up screen, you can see what your camera sees. You can change the settings of the camera, like your resolution, your perspective. You can watch playback. And in a way, it almost looks like a traditional action camera. But the fact that you can remove the Insta360 GO 3 from the case is so cool and very handy, especially if you want to trigger the camera from a distance. Look, if I press record right now, you'll see that red dot on the camera and now it's recording on the camera. And if I press the record button again, the camera has stopped recording. That's pretty cool, right? And then to put it away, simply just attach it just like so. And you can't remove it, which is really nice. And if you do want to remove the camera, there's this lock button over here on the side, press down on it and just, it does take a little bit of an effort to remove it. Ah, there we go. And now you can use the camera separate from the case. And so yeah, I love the action pod and I think is the best feature of the Go 3. Like the camera itself is is pretty good. Like it's it's an upgrade, not a big upgrade. Like it doesn't shoot 4K. Like that would have been awesome. But the action pod, that's clutch. So some quick pros and cons. I love the action pod. Again, it's my favorite feature of the GO3 system. And I also love how much stronger the magnets are with the magnetic mounting systems. Like there were times with the GO2 where I didn't feel the magnet was strong enough. And so I much appreciate the stronger magnetic system with the GO3. I also love the new and improved audio with the GO3. Like everything that I was hearing sounded really, really clear. And comparing it with my FX3 and the Sony ECM B10 mic, like it was, kind of comparable. I also love the extended record time on the Go 3, like that was really cool. I would never use that, but maybe if you're doing like a time lapse or I don't know, it's just cool. It's so cool. And then some things I didn't like about the Go 3, uh, it's not the upgrade that I was hoping for. Like I was kind of hoping that the Go 3 would shoot in 4K, like that would have been very cool. I'm fine that it shoots 2.7K, that's not a big deal to me, but it would have been cool if it was 4K. Also, it does overheat, and uh, there were a couple of times where it did stop recording because it just got so hot, especially when I placed the Go 3 on the dashboard of my car when I was trying to film a hyperlapse. Like, I live in Texas. It's hot in Texas. And with that, I was only able to capture 10 minutes of a hyperlapse. And then one last thing, uh, the Insta360 GO 3 comes in three different storage options. You have the 32 gig version, which will run you 379 US dollars. There's a 64 gig option, which is the one I have right here. That's gonna run you $399. And then there's a 128 gig version, which is going to run you $429. Personally, I think the 64 gigs is plenty fine to capture some fun stuff over the weekend. But then again, if you're going on some sort of excursion, then maybe 128 gigs is going to be good. But it's going to be different for everybody. And if you want to know more about the camera, then check out the links down below. But those are my first impressions of the Insta360 GO 3. I am still testing it out. And I definitely want to make a video comparing the GO 3 with the GO 2. So stand by for that. And if there's anything else you want to know about this camera, then let me know in the comments below. But that's it. That's the video. Thank you so much for watching. I gotta go. It's like 11.45 at night and this video is going out tomorrow. So I'm gonna go edit that. Bye. Oh.